The Gretchen border has come to be known as the Wretched Gretchen. The name strikes terror in the hearts of many basket weavers. Well, it's time for all of us to tackle that challenge and get over the fear of it. There's a mantra in the basket weaving community. We must try everything basket related at least once. Doing so, you might just like the experiment and end up making more. Or it could result in something a weaving friend of mine calls an only child. I have a number of those only children in my house. The point is that you never know if you're going to like something until you try it. So let's talk Gretchen. As a side note, this video is designed for basket weavers who have mastered basic basket weaving techniques. I use widely understood terms such as spokes, twining, rim row, weaver, hair pinning, etc. So if you're a beginner and not familiar with basket weaving terms, I suggest you partner with an experienced weaver and view this video together. That experienced weaver can help fill in those gaps. I searched various sources to find instructions to weave this border. On YouTube, I found nothing to help me. Then I began looking for patterns and found that some were more complete than others. I finally settled on four main sources, which are both well-written and image-based, including the tried and true Jeannie Jackson's Braided Border Baskets book, circa 1991. It may be three decades old, but it still works today. This video is designed to be a companion to written patterns, so please don't view it as a standalone tutorial. The information here is a mosaic of tips and techniques borrowed from various sources, and the pattern makers have been gracious enough to share their techniques with me for this project. I highly recommend you consider the product these talented weavers have to offer. I divided these sources into two groups, the full Gretchen and the half Gretchen, which I will explain in a couple of minutes. In the full Gretchen category is the Wretched Gretchen, part of Laura Lee Zanger's Little Bitty Basket Book series, and Gretchen Border, a pattern by Ramona Boykin. In the half Gretchen category is the Wretched Gretchen Rolled Border Rim, a pattern by Becky Bechtel. And as I mentioned, the braided border baskets by Jeannie Jackson. As you already know, there is never any one way to weave a basket, and this border is no exception. This video depicts my interpretation of the process. If you're taking a class or following a basket pattern, pay close attention to the directions from the teacher or the basket designer. They have reasons for doing certain things. Not following these instructions could affect the outcome of your basket. So, what is a Gretchen anyway? The Gretchen is a type of rolled border where you weave one row on top of another until you have completed the border, covering the top portion of the basket as its rim. It rolls from inside the basket to the outside, creating a knitted cuff look and provides a crowning touch to your basket. In my research, I learned there are two different ways to create this border, and there are probably more out there. The difference between the two Gretchen patterns comes from the direction in which the border weavers are inserted into the basket. For simplicity, I'm using the terms full and half when referencing these types of Gretchen borders. I made these two baskets to use in this video. They are both similar, but one is a full Gretchen and the other is a half Gretchen. There is no structural differences in the baskets. Which one you weave is totally up to you. Half Gretchen weavers are inserted vertically and only require about eight rows of weaving. Full Gretchen weavers are inserted horizontally and are woven into about 12 to 14 rows. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to weave the full version. 
It is more time consuming, a little more difficult since you have to start from the inside of the basket, and it also uses a bit more reed. But if you master this version, you won't have any problem with the half Gretchen. Before we start weaving, here are some helpful hints I've picked up while doing research and weaving this notorious border. Weave a basket that is rounded in shape and is at least eight inches in diameter. The size will be easier to work with, allowing you to see what you are doing. You want between one half and three quarters inches between the spokes at the top of the basket. Cover the outside of your basket with plastic before starting. Since everything needs to stay wet, the plastic helps prevent color from transferring from the reed to the basket while weaving. A disposable shower cap works well. Put a towel inside the basket to protect the base. You'll need to constantly spray the reed. An overly saturated base, even a sealed wooden base, will mildew and turn black overnight if not protected while weaving. Weave a border with two different colors for your first attempt. It helps to make sure you pick up the correct weavers and you can more easily see when you make an error. Cut your weavers anywhere from 52 to 60 inches each. However, if you're using a pattern, follow the instructions from the designer. Soak your weavers thoroughly. You want them wet to the core. About 15 minutes will do it. Keep your weavers damp. Spray the entire length of the weavers at the beginning of each row. Ensure your basket has an even number of spokes if you are weaving a two-color border. If you're weaving a solid color, the number of spokes is not critical. Tag your first two weavers on every row as you weave. I use twist ties. These make it easier to find your starting point when ending your row. Curve your weavers as you weave. Sharply bending them against the basket could cause them to break. Speaking of broken weavers, you can replace one that breaks by just inserting a new one alongside the broken one. It is simple, and I will demonstrate how to do this as we weave. Weave the border in one sitting, if possible. If you have to take a short break, clip the next four weavers together, or wait until you finish that row. Cover your fingers with waterproof tape. This helps protect your cuticles from being injured and prevents bleeding as you weave. I cover my left thumb and two forefingers with waterproof bandage tape. Limit distractions around you while weaving. It only takes looking up once to lose your place. This border takes a lot of concentration for first time Gretchen weavers. What will you need to weave this border? Number two or number three round reed. Number two for smaller baskets and number three for larger ones. A pair of basket shears. A fid, awl, packing tool or lash saver. A pair of needle nose pliers. Clips of various sizes. Spray bottle with lots of water. Towels. And a shower cap or plastic wrap. With that, let's start weaving. We're going to start weaving our border on a basket I've already woven. This basket has 42 spokes. It's low and it's 11 inches across, so it should be easier for you to see inside where we will be doing a lot of our initial work. I wove the basket using a standard pattern, but instead of a regular rim row, I used three rows of twining. You can use three rows of number three if you're using number three for the Gretchen, or three rows of number two if you're going to be using number two. You'll need a little more space between the spokes if you plan to use number three. You want your reed to be in proportion to the rest of your basket. After twining three rows, cut and tuck all the spokes. To keep things uniform, all spokes need to be cut and tucked to cover the rim row. I'm gonna be weaving this basket using an incline to make it a bit easier to see through the chaos of the weavers. It is a very repetitive and simple weaving process, but you'll be surprised how easily you can become overwhelmed with the massive amounts of reed flopping around. 
It's like weaving in rush hour traffic. You have to stay focused. I've already covered the basket with a shower cap to protect it from the wet colored reeds because they will stay very wet as we weave. I have my towel on the inside. My fingers are bandaged to protect them. Now let's spray down again to make sure our rim row is flexible and we can be ready to insert our first weavers. Let's begin by showing you how to insert the weavers for a half Gretchen. First, I'll use Becky Bechtel's technique. She takes her border weavers and inserts each one through the loops created when she tucked her spokes. To do that, use an awl to open up the spoke a bit and just run your weaver through it. Pull the weaver through that loop and bend it in a U shape until both ends are even. Then clip the ends of your weavers and hold them in place. You'll do this on every spoke all the way around the rim as you start the first row of your half Gretchen border. Jeannie Jackson does it a bit differently. Her technique is to hairpin each weaver through the twining of the rim row as it passes over the spoke. To do that, take your fid or lash saver and slide it along the spoke under the twining of the rim row. Then feed the border weaver through your fid. That done, we move to the next spoke and insert the other end of your weaver in the same way. This is similar to the technique used for a braided border. Leaving your fit in place, we run our second weaver through it as well. Since we're moving to the right, we'll slide this one to the right of the weaver already in the fit. Now we move to the next spoke. Insert the fit and slide the other end of the second weaver through the valley. They can be a bit stubborn if the fit isn't inserted deeply enough. With the weavers in place, we even the ends, making sure to pull them up until they are nice and tight against the rim row. We'll do this all the way around the basket. Using Becky's technique, you can weave leaning the weaver slightly to the inside of the basket to help cover the tops of your spokes. Jeannie's technique holds the weavers vertical to the basket rim, so the top of the basket is a little more exposed. That is the beginnings of the half Gretchen border. By the way, these short weavers are only examples. The actual length will be much longer and dependent upon the pattern you are following. The full Gretchen starts out differently. We hairpin the weavers horizontally and you have two options for how to do that. The first option is to insert all of your weavers at the same time clockwise around the basket. That way, when you begin weaving counterclockwise, the weavers you need first are on top. The second method is to insert the weavers six or so at a time. The six at a time method is one I picked up from the Missouri Basket Weavers Guild webpage. It cuts down on the confusion created when the basket is full of loose weavers. This is a method I'll use here. This graphic depicts why the insert six and weave option could be beneficial. That little red circle represents our 11 inch basket. These lines represent all the weavers each 30 inches long and the confusing mess they make when they are stretched out over the basket. Again, there are 42 spokes on this basket. We're going to create this border with two colors to make it a bit easier to follow. So, I've already cut 21 smoke weavers and 21 natural weavers to complete our full Gretchen border. We'll start with the smoke weaver. Insert your fid between your spoke and below the three rows of twining. Next, insert one end of your smoke reed. Then we go to the other side of the spoke, insert the fid, and insert the other end of the weaver through the valley of the fid. Remove your fid, even up the ends of your smoke weaver, and pull it through to the inside of your basket, hair pinning it snugly around the spoke. We are going to insert these weavers counterclockwise. So insert the fid next to your smoke weaver, and then insert the end of a natural weaver. 
That done, move the thread to the right of that spoke and slide it between the spokes and then insert the other end of your weaver. Again, even up the ends and pull the weaver most of the way through. This time, I'm going to leave the fid in place and insert my next smoke weaver. Then I move to the other side of the spoke, insert my fid, and slide the other end of the smoke weaver through it. The next weaver is a natural, as is every other one. Natural, smoke, natural, smoke, natural, smoke. This is weaver number four. Continue this process until you have inserted a total of six pairs of weavers. Now you have six pairs of weavers ready to weave. I'll move the basket into my weaving position and we're going to work starting on the left and moving toward the right. Since I'm right-handed, we'll weave counterclockwise all the way around the basket. Left-handed weavers may find it more comfortable to reverse the pattern and weave clockwise. This insert six and weave pattern will be the way we make our entire journey around the basket. Since we don't need the last four pairs of weavers right now, I'm clipping those to the side to get them out of the way. We'll release them one pair at a time as we need. Before we get started, there's a couple things we need to note. We know all reed is not the same, and some will not bend well, even when thoroughly soaked. When you run into that, take a pair of pliers and lightly crush the fibers where you want it to bend. That should help keep it from breaking. Also, I want to tag these first two weavers before we get started. When we finish a row, the tags make locating the starting point easier. Each row in the Gretchen border is its own entity, built on top of the last. This makes it hard to see where you begin the row unless you mark it. So I'm marking mine with twist ties as I start this and each subsequent row. This will make more sense later. As we get started, we pick up two sets of weavers, the first smoke pair and the first natural pair. This is how we'll weave the entire basket dealing with two pairs of weavers at a time. With the first pair on the far left in my hand, we take the weaver furthest to the left, go behind the two adjacent weavers, a smoke and a natural, then between the two naturals, pulling our weaver toward the outside of the basket, meaning toward you. It looks like this. You now have three weavers in your hand. Take the brown one, the weaver furthest to the left, and run it behind the two natural weavers and then out. Again, behind two and out. Pull your weaver tail out of the way. No doubt you've already picked up on the pattern. As we begin to weave, the four words to remember are behind two and out. After weaving this border, don't be surprised if you start saying those words in your sleep. Now that you have two weavers left, unclip the bundle and release the next pair of weavers, which are brown in this case. I free them and then clip the bundle back together just to keep things clear. The battle with the weavers will become constant as we continue. We'll take the natural weaver to the far left and repeat our pattern, behind two and out. It is important to keep these weavers in order because if you make an error, you will see it. The Gretchen is a simple border that is very repetitive, tedious, and time consuming. Pick up the next pair and you'll note, each time you pick up another set, you will always have two pairs of different colors in your hand. Behind two and out. Behind two and out. Pick up the last pair and repeat again. Behind two and out. Behind two and out. You now have a pair left in your hand and nothing to pick up. 
so it's time to insert your next six weavers. I'll clip this pair to the side to keep it out of the way. Turn the basket to make it a little bit easier to work with and massage the weavers to tighten them up. You'll want to keep the first couple of rows as tight as possible to give your border a solid foundation. Once tight, I'll start inserting new weavers, starting with a smoke pair. I try to manage my weavers to keep them from becoming a tangled mess, so I am clipping them together as we add more to our basket. We take the fid and place it in between the last two spokes where you inserted the last weaver. Insert one end of the smoke weaver, and then we insert the other end on the right side of the same spoke. Even up the ends and pull it through to the center of the basket. After we hairpin five more pairs into place, we'll be ready to weave this new set. With the next six in place, pick up the adjacent smoke pair of weavers I just inserted. I'm clipping the last five pairs to the side and we take off weaving. Furthest weaver to the left, behind two and out. Pick up the next, behind two and out. Pick up two more, clip the excess out of the way and repeat. Behind two and out. Behind two and out. Continue this weaving pattern until you finish all of these. Once you get to the end of the series, insert six more and keep weaving, working your way counterclockwise all the way around the basket. You'll stop when you reach the two tagged weavers. We'll weave that last pair into those two weavers to finish the row. Right now, I've got about 15 minutes of weaving to get to that point. When we get to the last two weavers, we'll need to clip those together while we prepare their destination under our tagged weavers. But before we do that, let's take a look at our weaving so far. All the weavers are in pairs of two natural and two smoke. This is an excellent time to check that color pattern to make sure you've not made an error. You want to get your border off to the right start. Another thing to look for is to make sure that only one weaver comes out of each looped intersection. Checking these things now can prevent unraveling a bunch of stuff later to correct a mistake. With that done, Let's end the first row. We'll start by using a tool to leverage the two tagged weavers up just a bit. The last two natural weavers are going to go under them. Gently raise up our tagged weavers about an inch or so. And now we can remove the twist ties. This is our first weaver and this is our second weaver. Using our behind to and out pattern, We'll take the weaver furthest to the left, pass it behind the other natural weaver and the first smoke weaver. Slide it underneath the weaver that was tagged on the left. The last natural weaver that is still free will go behind the first and second smoked weaver and we'll insert it through the small intersection right here. I'll slide my fid through the hole, now slide my weaver through the fid, and we'll tighten down all the weaving. As before, we'll go around and massage all of our weavers, making sure they are as tight as they can get up against the basket. I can't emphasize enough, the first and second rows are important. So push the weavers through, then pull on them a little to tighten everything. The good news is row one is done. The bad news, this is just one row of about 12. You can start row two anywhere on the basket, but I recommend you choose two adjacent weavers of the same color. And between every row, 
you'll want to give your weavers a good soaking. That moisture is key to keep the fibers flexible. Make sure you spritz your weavers all the way to the ends. After that, we pick up two weavers and we'll mark them as our first two so we can end this row as we did the first one. Once the tags are in place, we pick up two more weavers and take off as we did before. Weaver to the far left, behind two and out. Next, smoke weaver, behind two and out. Pick up the next pair and repeat our pattern, behind two and out. We'll keep weaving until we get back to our tags and we'll do just as we did a minute ago, lifting up those tagged weavers and inserting our last two into the intersections. Once row two is complete, we'll finish it just as we did row one. Raise the two weavers we've marked and then remove the twist ties. Take the weaver on the far left and go behind two and out through our first hole. Then the last weaver goes behind two and out the second hole at the intersection of the first two weavers. Tighten these weavers up and make sure everything around the basket is snug and you're ready for row three. With the second row complete, you can see the pattern beginning to emerge. This is row one and this is row two. And because we have our shower cap in place, None of the color from the brown reed we've been repeatedly soaking has bled onto the basket. Now we check our weaving to make sure that everything is in pairs, looking for errors. With the amount of weaving involved with the Gretchen border, you want to catch errors early. It will take about four or five rows to make it to the top of the rim, and each of these rows will be made like the first two. We will need to manipulate the weavers to the crest of the top of the basket and start down the other side. Row four is finished and I've started weaving row five. Something you'll notice here is that the weaving is starting to roll just a bit over the top. While weaving, you don't want to change the position of your hands. You want to change the position of the basket. I've now angled the basket up so I can continue weaving with my hands in the same position. You'll notice my hands are now working over the top and pulling downward on the outside of the basket, rather than upward to the rim. Our hands are in the same position, but slowly rolling the weaving over the rim of the basket toward the outside. We just keep going behind two and out. After row six, the weaving has made a definite curve over the rim of the basket. This is about the time when, if you have a handle on your basket, you'll need to incorporate it. You've been weaving around it all along, using the handle as one of your spokes as you inserted the weavers. You'll weave to the inside of the handle for about five, maybe six rows, depending on the handle, the size, and the basket. You'll know you are ready to begin going around the outside of the handle when you are snug up against the inside of it. You complete the next row by maneuvering to the outside of the handle and then weave as normal. Invariably, one of your weavers is going to break. To fix this problem, we'll use a weaver of the same color as the broken one and the length of the other weavers. I'll lift the rim just a bit and slide the new weaver as deep as possible to the inside of the rim next to the broken one. If it comes out on the other side, that's okay. We can trim that later. We'll leave the broken weaver in place and continue weaving with our replacement. The same weave pattern, behind two and out, ignoring the broken weaver protruding from the rim. Behind two and out. Pick up the next two weavers, behind two and out, just leave the broken weaver in place. We'll cut that off after weaving a row or two. That incorporates the new weaver, locking it into place. Remember, we'll change the angle of the basket rather than the position of your hands. By giving it a steep incline, we make sure we keep weaving down the outside of the basket. 
We'll keep weaving until we have about five rows down the outside, giving us 12 rows total. There will be five on the inside, two on the top, and five on the outside. Once you get the hang of behind two and out, I find it quicker to just pick up one weaver at a time rather than two. It requires more concentration to make sure you don't make a mistake, but it speeds up the process. By the time I reach row 10, the basket is basically upside down. I just keep maneuvering the basket over to keep the weaving tight. Again, you can see why the shower cap comes in handy as those wet weavers continue to slap against the side and bottom of the basket. It doesn't take much moisture on a wooden base to cause it to mildew and we can no longer use a towel to protect it. With 12 rows in place, you can see the twining in the rim row of the basket is covered both on the outside and the inside. We're gonna let the basket dry overnight before removing the excess lengths of weavers. Let's go ahead and trim off that broken weaver we replaced and push the excess underneath. There's a huge amount of excess on the weavers, but I like having extra length to hang on to for leverage as I weave. I'm gonna flip it over to dry, but leave the shower cap in place to protect the sides from the soaking wet weavers. To make sure the bottom doesn't mildew from the collecting dampness, we'll cut away the shower cap to let the basket and the base breathe. To make sure the weavers dry as flat as possible, I'll place some spoke weights on them to hold them flat to the table. That trains them into the direction we will need to be able to clip them off and hide the ends under the border. The next morning, our weavers are dry and ready to be trimmed. If you raise the edge of the border a bit, you can see underneath it. We're gonna cut the weavers off so that they slide right up inside here. We'll cut them off two at a time. About a half inch is a good length to cut these weavers. Any longer and they might work their way out from their hiding places. Any shorter and they might unravel. Go to the next two and cut those. You can see they almost hide themselves. And we do that all the way around the basket. And this is our finished basket. Add a divided insert and we are ready to party. Just in case you were worried, there was no reed wasted in the making of this video. You can take the excess trimmings and put those to use making small trivet ornaments. I've got directions for making those in my trivet video which is also on my YouTube channel. As always, if you have any questions or if you'd like a copy of the pattern and graphics, which include all of the information contained in this video, please send me an email at the address on the screen and I'll be glad to share them with you. And feel free to send me a picture of your handiwork. I enjoy seeing the work of others. We do these videos simply because I enjoy both sharing and learning. I hope this one helps you tame the wretched Gretchen.